Thanks for listening to the nice podcast. I am available to deliver keynote presentations and workshops for your company or for your conference. Reach out to me, davedelaneyspeaks.com or email me and we can talk. Now on with the show. As a business to business marketer, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you'll have direct access to and build relationships relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives. 10 million are C-level executives. You'll also be able to drive results with targeting and measurement tools built specifically for B2B, and they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn is the social network that drives the most visits to my website from all the different articles and interactions that I do on LinkedIn. I have to tell you, LinkedIn is awesome. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash NPN. Terms and conditions apply. They, they have a lot of retention because the leader is accessible. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, the benefits are great. You work from home, but they also have offsites. Yeah. Every year they all get together, yeah, and that's the thing. Uh-huh. I'm actually not opposed to hybrid, like, and I'm not talking about hybrid weekly hybrid. I'm, I'm not talking about even daily hybrid where you go in for half the day. I'm talking about like once a month or twice a month you go into the office. That's when you have your your team meetings in person. That's when you have small little maybe let's all get the lunch off sites. Let's all get get lunch. That's when you do that. So you're still home. You still have the flexibility of, oh, Johnny got off the bus. I have to go pick him up. I'll be back in yeah. three minutes, and I don't have to commute home. There's ways to do remote. Nice. 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 Nice with Dave Delaney. Welcome to the Nice Podcast, all about communication, collaboration, and becoming better leaders. I'm your host, Dave Delaney from futureforth.com, where we help you retain talent, improve culture, and communication so you have happier, more connected teams. Today, I'm speaking with Seth Goldstein, the founder and principal creative director of Goldstein Media, a full-service digital marketing agency based in suburban Philly. He helps mid-sized companies of all sizes get found. Seth? Welcome to Nice. What's up? <laughs> most, m- most people younger than us would not get that reference. Not at all. But I'll be nice. It was a Budweiser commercial. That was a very nice commercial. It was a good from, commercial. It was a good commercial. I'm just trying to throw the word nice in a few times for Google. Are there even <laughs> yeah? Are there even like good commercials anymore? I don't. I don't know. There, I don't watch. There's, there, there's some good ones. I watch like Netflix watch Google, or Hulu with ads. You get some. Good ones, but then they kind of kill them by the time you're done watching the show because it's the same ad every single break. It's amazing that they haven't. I remember when it wasn't Netflix, so I guess it must have. It might have been Hulu when Hulu first launched, and mm-hmm. I was watching uh, Twenty Four on it, and oh, yeah. it was the same Ford commercial every break, and sometimes like two in a row, the same it, commercial. It, it could be good. Or it was good that first time, not the fiftieth time, right? And it was like, uh, like how, like this is such a great medium. How have they not figured out ads yet? Like, surely other people want to pay to have their ads there. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, who knows? Who knows? I don't it wasn't know. very nice of them to do that to us. No, no. All right. Well, I like to start these things by asking, what is the nicest thing someone has done for you recently? Let me see, because, I mean, there's a lot of nice people out there. Mm. But I have to say it was my wife who made an amazing strata last night. Ooh, that sounds so, good. So, but unfortunately left it up to me to put in the oven and overcook. Oh, it no. T- it, was st- it was still tasty. Yeah. But it w- I wasn't very nice by, doing, <laughs> by burning it. Was she mad at you, or was everything okay? Yeah, it was edible, so we enjoyed it. So. Ah, there but you go. Was, it was nice because it, what was nice about it, and this is maybe not nice in the professional sense, but it was nice because I didn't have to do, do much. Yeah, that's I the, literally. Yeah. I literally I go up and then put take it out for a half an hour, 
<laughs> they put it in the oven for an hour, which would have been 40 minutes, but whatever. We'll go with it. Yeah. And then, then pull it out, and there's dinner. You, so you it, was had, very, it was very nice. You had one job. Just I had one, one job. job. I feel <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'm the same way. Actually, I, uh, I, I, I can do that too. We got a, we got an air fryer last year. Ooh, we finally, fryer. we finally got it like with the, with the program, and we got an air fryer. And damn, yes. that thing is cool, man. Like it's don't do fish in it. It'll make uh, your house stink for weeks. Oh, that's a good tip. That's a good tip. No, no that that's something you should be pull out and put it in a audiogram. Don't put fish in your air fryer under <laughs> any circumstances. You'll smell at the South Street Sea South Street Seaport in Manhattan. It's horrible. Horrible, horrible. Okay, good. Duly noted. So yes, I've I've been yeah, I've been excited. I know we are both uh fellow podcasters uh on the wonderful marketing podcast network. So shout out to uh to the network and to Mr. Falls. Yeah. Love love him and love oh, being awesome. on that. Yeah, he is. He is. How do you how do you and Jason Falls go? Uh how did you guys connect? We go way back. It's kind it's kind of how we all know him from the conference. Hmm. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. he's bigger than life. Yep. He's just such an awesome, amazing guy. I met Jason at the Ascend Conference in Philadelphia, put on by a Weber in, in I think, 2012. Nice. And it was at the Liberty Place Conference Center. Have you ever been to Philadelphia? It's that, like, it's the yeah. two big Liberty Towers. Yeah. One has the mall. And I remember, I actually remember the moment I met him. Hmm. Because he's kind of this big, jolly, handsome fun guy yes and you can't help but remember him because he's very memorable he is and he's approachable which i love about him that's what i like about you too dave yeah so, that's what i love about our whole network because we're all approachable i mean jason's like this has this godlike quality I and mean, he will disagree with me completely but i think out of everyone he's the most known across more more verticals yeah and yet he's the most down-to-earth fun southern boy you'll ever meet he is. He's a bourbon Kentucky dude. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Jason. Yeah. Jason and I met in oh oh eight at South oh, by beating. Southwest wow. Interactive the conference yeah. at the Gingerman Gingerman Bar. Uh, which, oh, you remember the bar too? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it had bats, uh, which Austin is known for. But uh, it. Yeah, I remember. Like the doors were open and bats would occasionally fly in and out. Oh, not baseball bats. No, no, bat no, bats. no. no. We we're not talking about base. Bats. We're not talking about baseball here. We're talking about you know. That's memorable. That's yeah. very memorable. Yeah, yeah. So good times. Good times. So tell me a little bit about what Goldstein Media is all about. I know you launched in two thousand and seven, right? <laughs> oh yeah, the best time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was a great time. Yeah. But I, my my main goal with Goldstein Media, I'm a former journalist, mm -hmm. a recovering journalist. I wrote for newspapers. Remember those? <laughs> yes. Black and white and, and red all over. Oh my god, and all over your hands too. Yes. But so anyhow, I I left that. Met my now wife. She encouraged me to go back in the web design because I've been dabbling in it and in it at the beginning of the millennium the, you know the turn of the century mm. and i said all right I'll, uh, i want to get a job in this so i went back to school got a certificate from the university of the arts and started building websites for people um it, it took like five years until i had to go try corporate out for about a year and a half and there was nice parts to corporate mm. but generally i don't like corporate because a lot of parts are not nice. Hmm. And so I then left corporate. For, I did about a year and a half stint and then went back to Goldstein Media version two, which is a lot less of a cluster F than hmm. the first version. <laughs> I was a journalist. I wasn't a marketer beforehand. Hmm. So that kind of thing. So yeah, we help companies of all sizes try and stay away from enterprise because that's a committee you have to deal with. We have all, all, all companies of all sizes pretty much get found online, as you said, very eloquently at the beginning. Yes. Yeah, no, that's true. Tell me about the like you you mentioned kind of corporate life for a little while and and stuff that you didn't like. Yeah. What was the stuff you didn't like about it? It's whose ass you had to kiss on what day, at what mm. time, <laughs> on what moon phase? Yes. And I, I and Dave, I, I'm sure you laugh because I'm sure you know that person. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the people like Dave. I mean, literally the people that are friendly, outgoing. Not even be Canadian. <laughs> I mean, literally, if you beat someone that's friendly, outgoing, and mostly pleasant all the time, 
they're most likely something they're not from the United States directly. <laughs> it, 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 oh, come on. Oh, my God. I, mean, I, love, <laughs> I love the U.S. But I have not met a grumpy kid. Actually, no, I take that back. The border guards going to Niagara Falls, they were grumpy. There you go. They were the only, they were the only grumpy Canadians <laughs> I've ever met in my life where I was at the border. Like, what, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I want to see the falls from your side. <laughs> and yet compared to the, going through and yet compared to the american ones they're probably a, a back, walk like, in the hey, park how's it going welcome back yeah <laughs> that's how i feel like crossing over from the states back back into canada yeah it's Although, like, why'd you ever leave how dare you yeah some days some days i wonder uh <laughs> not this day but exactly. sometimes yeah, but, yeah, but so look about the corporate I mean, it's also I was in control of my destiny. Yeah, and I was, and I think I was feeling the tinge of being like me, an entrepreneur, set my own hours, which is better for worse, a mm-hmm. good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, like this is before the work from home craze happened, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna start that back in 2015 with Automatic, the mm-hmm. makers of WordPress. Mm-hmm. There are all the distributed team. It started before the pandemic, the work from home craze. Yeah, it was. It was megaphones, for lack of a better word. Amplify, that's the word, not megaphoned. Mm -hmm. Whatever, good Mm -hmm. enough. Um, It was amplified by the pandemic because you couldn't go into work. What are you going to do? You need to work. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, there's this thing called Zoom. To this day, I can't find the share screen button. It's a big green uh, button. I can't. I, I'm always like, where is that button? Yeah. It's the big green button in the center, and they're probably sitting there like, yeah. It's the biggest green button possible. <laughs> it should be blinky, like whatever. But yes. The thing is, is that this is before work from home. So that's another thing. I didn't like is that my boss would say, only if you're sick can you work from home. Mm. And when I, when I said I was said I was sick, I worked better from home. Right. <laughs> Right. And he's like, are you really sick? I'm like, I'm getting my job done. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd get it done. Yeah, yeah. I get it done better than I was when I was in work. Because when you're working at the water cooler, mm. you know, you got your person that's in the office behind your cubicle. God forbid someone farts. That's yes. Just, that's just deadly in the, cu- in the cubicles. Yeah. I mean, like, you, you really are, and that's kind of silly, but that you are kind of in control of your destiny and your workspace so you can you can only set up a cuticle 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 cuticle, <laughs> cuticle yes as as comfy as only so far. Mm. Whereas in your house, I mean, I've seen Dave's you know when he's been on my podcast, Entrepreneurs Enigma. Mm-hmm. Check it out yes. every Tuesday eight a.m. on Eastern Time. Yes, and, you know, I've seen his his home office, and it's homey, it's comfy, it screams Dave. Mm-hmm. Like my and I went to IKEA. I have bookshelves behind me. You can't see this because it's an audio only podcast. White bookshelves, lots of books on it, lots of tchotchkes. Yeah. But that makes me feel like I'm, I can work. It motivates me versus trying to make something sterile like a cubicle workable. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, there are plenty of studies that show that productivity has increased uh, with people working from home. So there's definitely a plus there. My what I'm <laughs> what I'm convinced with though is that if you have a fully distributed team Mm -hmm. there's a few exceptions but for the most part if you have a fully distributed team then employee retention isn't going to be your strong suit because if you don't have any friends at work and you don't have any affinity Mm -hmm. to the brand that way because you don't go and you're not together ever then Mm -hmm. ultimately as soon as somebody waves a higher paycheck and a better benefits and all that jazz you, you know, you, you'll most likely, not you, but anybody would most yeah. likely jump ship. Do you think that's that's true? I don't know. It really depends on how you work it. Like automatic is, you know, a big one that pops in my head because they've been doing it for so long. They, they have a lot of retention hmm. because the leader, you know, Matt is accessible. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, the benefits are great. You work from home, but they also have offsites. Yeah. Every year they all get together. Yeah. And that's the thing. Uh-huh. I'm actually not opposed to hybrid. Like, and I'm not talking about hybrid, weekly hybrid. I'm, I'm not talking about even daily hybrid where you go in for half the day. Right. I'm talking about like once a month or twice a month you go into the office. You have, that's when you have your, your team meetings in person. That's when you have small little, maybe let's all get the lunch off sites. Let's all get, get lunch. That's when you do that. So you're still home. You still have the flexibility of, oh, Johnny got off the bus. I have to go pick him up. I'll be back in three yeah. minutes, and I don't have to commute home. Commute, 
it back with Johnny or whatever in tow. Yeah. Like, there's ways to do remote, remote hybrid that I think people like Musk just don't get amongst other things. Yeah, like, there's a lot he does. Twitter. You mean, yeah. but, but on Twitter, it's like everyone has to be back in the office. That's, I, that is an antiquated. It's bullshit. Yeah. language. It's still like it's, things have to change, mm-hmm. and you should go talk to Dave because Dave can help you fix it. <laughs> well, thank you for the plug. No, I I, gr- I agree with you. I mean, you, yeah, you hit on something there because you know when I mentioned like fully distributed team, I'm talking about yeah, a fully distributed team who never meets in person. Well, uh, and, you know, and there's no loyalty. Right. Exactly. Loyalty, exactly. The loyalty itself. You need to yeah. isn't how much moolah you're making. Yeah, I mean if you're if you're um boss is a jerk mm. i don't care how, you know then you're even less affinity to the brand and you're gonna leave him faster yeah but even if you like your boss you like your team for the most part but you're all over the country all over the world you're you may have a little bit of affinity you may have a little bit of loyalty but not enough if the person flashes 10 grand more in front of your face right and a better and a better benefits package right a lot of, a lot of people will leave for same price better benefits yeah and, and that's why i'm a i mean that's why i do like guest speaking engagements and, and, and workshops for companies for their like company retreats and things like that. Like I was just in Scottsdale doing that for a two day uh, workshop Ooh. I did for um, some trainers, which was great. And, but it, it brings them together because the, the team I was working with are fully distributed because they all work in different regions of the country. So they, they can't they're distributed. They're the old school distributed. Yeah. But no, I mean, it's because geographically that's where they work. Like they, they have to be they that way. Be. Yeah. But they, but they were that, that they were not a pandemic reason. No, they were, that's how they've always been. Right. They have the region. Well, you kind of have to sell into that region. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to actually be in that region. So you know, the landscape of that region, mm. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So for that, you know, but bringing the team together in house for, uh, like, as I said, like a retreat or an offsite or something yeah. like that is is important. And then different businesses have different. I mean, there's different businesses that that have to have everybody uh, in the office or, or back to work. But and there are some essentials. Sure. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I mean, this is this is completely excluding government because mm-hmm. you know, government, you really. They, things get in trouble. People get in trouble when they bring their work from government home. Right. They have they have a very bad track record of working from home success. Yes. Well, I, I, I yeah. yeah, I had Dennis O'Shea on the podcast a while Our back. Brand, yeah. yeah. Who uh, and he from Mobile Mentor, and you know he was talking about shadow IT and how work people working from home have a, like they have a computer that the you know they've been given to mm-hmm. from their IT department, but they use their home uh, laptop, like their regular laptop, or they like bypass security in order to use like, uh, you know, if they don't use Microsoft Teams, but they like it, they switch over to that or they go to Google and they use Google Google Workspace. Their personal accounts. Yeah, it's horrible, yeah. Yeah, so there's big security implications there. Imagine a headache. I'm I'm glad I'm not in IT. I do web design. I do not do IT. I will not fix your computer. Right. (laughs) Let's talk. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about web design, actually, because I'm curious where your head's at with sort of the state of, of... of web design, user experience, user interfaces, that kind of thing. Like you mentioned Zoom, you know, with, yeah. with that button that should button. be clear, but for it is clear. But I, mean, you, I don't think they could have done better UX than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, unless you put it dead center in the middle of the screen, which mm. gets in the way of everything else. Yeah. What, when you think about it, it's yeah. the only spot you can put that button. It makes logical sense. Right. Right. But it's weird because yeah, I I, I miss it too. And others that I'm on calls with miss I, it. We all do. It's it's crazy. Yeah. But, so, but I mean, yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to ask you. So tell me, tell me a little bit about trends you're seeing and and things in web design, uh, you know, in development. A lot, yeah, a lot more accessibility minded people are out there. Like the alt text, yeah, alt text behind the image yeah. used to be a great place to shove some keywords. Yeah. Now Google's even with the helpful content update, the HCU, they're saying they need use that for an accessibility mm-hmm. more. Describe the picture so it helps. If disabled, the blind person hear what the picture is about. Mm-hmm. Google will then rank you better because you're helping out the end user, not sucking up to the you know mm-hmm. the machines. Right. And that's uh, so a very big move to accessibility, making sure that your site's colors you're not having like light gray on like sky blue. Mm. Like, if you imagine that, like 
like really light gray, almost a white on the two bright colors together. Yeah, yeah. you need to have the contrast. Yeah. And so, um, there's a big, big push to, for con- more contrast, um, less pastels. I mean, I mean, there's a way to do pastels right, mm. but you still need you need like a hard color pastel, a deep pastel with a light pastel. We're getting into the color theory now, but you know, ultimately, these are the trends that people are seeing is a lot of accessibility minded things even creeping into the marketing space hmm. like you see linkedin now when you put an image up you can put all text in yeah it, mastodon all over the place you it almost screams at you if you don't put in an all text description mm-hmm. it's annoying sometimes it's like put an all text description in. i don't really care at this point because it's not thing that really worth describing you know? yeah yeah and then and that's also something to realize is that sometimes you don't have to put all text on every image only the ones that make sense that you think are going to be valuable to everyone who cited or not cited. Yeah. Do you think we're sort of early? I mean, we're, we're always early days and things, but I feel like with, you know, the adoption of AI that it won't be long before AI could just alt alt text it by itself. Could tell you what's no, in they the can image. Do, they can do it all, but they can already do that. Yeah. That's already, that's already doable. There's, word, there's a WordPress plugin for that. Uh-huh. And it saved my my backside a few times already. Oh, interesting! It's not it's not perfect, but all text doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be somewhat reliable. Mm. So you can say these are like this page. It's it's still a lot of user input. You say this page is a bunch of bathrooms. Mm. You know, you can't say here's a bunch of photos and it looks and it actually looks at everything. Right. It, it will automate. It's more of an automation than an AI. I guess that's what it is. It's more of an automation. Mm. But you tell bathrooms, and then it will automatically pull GPT-3 in or whatever and come up with the words to make him sound, I guess, less robotic. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty, it's pretty slick. Yeah, that is cool. I, I switched years ago from – we're going to geek out here a little bit. Uh, but I, I switched uh-huh. from WordPress years ago to Squarespace. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Because I'm a tinkerer. And I would break my WordPress site. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not a developer. I mean, I know enough uh-huh. CSS and HTML to be not moderately dangerous. Uh, probably yeah. not. But, um, <laughs> but, and I also found, I mean, you get what you pay for with plugins, yeah. but sadly, most plugins that people use are free. And so what happens over time mm-hmm. is the developer stops working on that plugin, that plugin gets hacked. And then next thing you know, when you update your plugins, that plugin is now just infected your site with malware and you're just dropped in organic search results. So talk to me a little bit about that now. So what I tell people uh, with the whole idea of WordPress is that it's 40% of the web. It is a vector. It is a target by for scammers and creeps and all that stuff that want to take hackers that want to take over your site. Right. But if you think about it, just keep your site up to date. If there's a plugin that goes out of date, you might want to change that and find another plugin that does similar functionality. There's more than a million, more way more than a million plugins out there. Yeah. So maybe they don't get the ones that haven't been updated in four years that mm-hmm. are not compatible with your current theme or whatever. But like, it's simple as saying update. Now, sometimes that can break your site. I mean, there, there's a benefit to having a Squarespace site. And I was and I was just joking with Dave. I mean, <laughs> nothing wrong with Squarespace. Nothing wrong with Wix. And, I'll, and I used to hate Wix. Yeah, I used to hate Wix, too. But I've, apparently they've done, a, it, they've done a, a good job with it. Yeah. He's, he's Morty, over, Morty over, at, um, over at Wix, you know, gave me a, an account for a year. Thanks, Morty, um, to try it out. It's slick. It overcodes everything. Mm. It, these visual things overcode. Mm. Like they're like if you're trying to be something to everyone and, and everything to none, pretty much. Mm. Because they bloat the code. As much as Morty will say, we can rank it ranked. Yeah, at, but what at what cost? Could you do that better if you did something more with WordPress? Right. Just saying. I'm bringing the feud over to your garden now. Dave, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> Morty on you right now. Yeah, and he'll say, "Hey, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong." Yeah, or whatever. I think it's I think it's different strokes for different folks, really. Yeah, I mean that was the main thing for me is you know as yeah. I mentioned was was the security because of plugins going rogue. 
um, yeah. which wasn't the, the fault of WordPress because, of course, it's you, it's the user who installs mm-hmm. the plugins. And so it's buyer beware. And if you're not paying for it, then especially uh, you got to be careful with that. Um, oh, absolutely. And then if you're tinkering with the code as well, which I would well, do. Well, maybe you shouldn't just maybe you should keep your hands off the code, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Don't just don't, don't do it. Don't I just can't it. do that, Dave. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. I went there. Yes. And I said my age. I went to the 20. What was it? 2001. Yeah, 2001 Space yeah. Odyssey. Yeah, my wife. Was like, yeah. Uh, I was going to say my wife almost divorced me over that movie. Oh, <laughs> It was our first post-COVID film in the theater. There's, oh a, gr- there's a great theater here in Nashville uh, called the Bell Court, and it's uh, it's. I'm a big movie nerd, and in Toronto, mm-hmm. growing up, I spent a lot of time in little art house cinemas and places, and uh, and they play like you know old movies and cool art house films. Mm-hmm. And anyway, they were playing 2001, and I was like, no way! And so I took my wife and my son. My daughter mm-hmm. was away, and. Uh, I for, I forgot first of all that, that that movie has an intermission and it has an intermission for a reason. Uh, that movie I I've never made it through the whole movie without falling asleep. It, well, yeah, she was like feeling the rage by yeah she was <laughs> she was feeling not she's she's not a it's movie funny. nerd first of all. So even if you're losing, I love movies, but like yeah that even that movie even got me nauseous. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was that long. You have to watch it in like five. Nights. It's like a week long project. Yeah. Well, I mean, seeing it in the theater on the big screen was was super cool. But but, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's some yeah. You uh, especially in the TikTok generation. I don't know how most people, young people, would be able to get. Oh through yeah, it I now. know. Have you have you have you seen R R R yet? Triple R. Triple it's a R. Bo- yeah, it's a um, Bollywood film that's like three and a half hours long. Hmm. With a big musical interlude in the mi- middle, which is supposed to be amazing, I still have three and a half hours to give up to a movie. But yeah, no, I I, I struggle with movie duration these days too. <laughs> I, I I mean, I don't mind it being long as long as it's, oh, you know, it's worth really being long. But um, I mean, Deer Hunter was a fantastic movie. It was also yeah, a long really movie, weird. and it was also a hell of a long dance sequence actually in that film too. Really? So, yeah, it was like a Polish wedding. And, uh, yeah, there was like a whole big, what the, the movie, I'm totally geeking out on movies now, but, uh, I'm deer, sorry. yeah, deer, no, you're good. Uh, the whole beginning of deer hunter, it's all like at this wedding and, uh, but it's That's like, funny. but it's like that for a reason because they do, uh, it's less like entertainment where a Bollywood film would be around dance and absolutely. Yeah. I mean, hell yeah. But, but it, it, with, with that film specifically, they're, they're doing heavy character development. So you're getting to know all the different characters. Mm, so that way when, when, her. when they push off to war and bad things happen, it's a lot more f- effective to the viewer because you, you love certain characters and you Ooh, don't want, I, you don't want I, bad I, things to happen to them. Deer Hunter, I'm a little young for Deer Hunter. When that came out, I was way too young. So. Yeah, no, I think I was too. I saw it a little later, but it's hey, so, yeah, so, so, so back to yeah, cards. but we digress. Yeah, so um, <laughs> no, 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 and I, I'm, but I, yeah, tell me a little bit about the the journalism background and how you sort yeah. of what sort of elements from that kind of that that you pulled into into web design and, and yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of the, the way to write, you know, I was a I was a history journalism majors with minors in anthropology and political science. Go mm-hmm. so figure, like, what the hell am I gonna do with any of that besides the journalism? Right. But I found that the journalism writing is very much like web writing. It is web writing. It's the short, nonsensical paragraphs of like two sentences, and each, you're in the same same thought, but you're in the next paragraph because for the eyes, not for the, not for the structure. And so my history professors used to hate how I would write in college because I couldn't un I because I wanted to be a journalist, I couldn't unlearn the journalist way for some history professor who where I'm not gonna write like that in the future. Mm-hmm. So all my A papers were probably A plus papers, all my Bs were probably B plus papers because I could, they couldn't give me the plus. Right. And I'm gonna also say C plus papers to be modest because that this happens from time to time. Yeah. But um, but all my professors, even in anthropology, like, I'm sure it didn't help me with my D in biological anthropology. Oh God, that's awful class. <laughs> oh, that's awful class. But then journalism, the fact go forward in time a little bit here. Journalism r- really helps with um websites. They'll not just the 
the how you write, also how you lay things out on the page. Mm. It, it's very modular, and you got to think about. And websites are very modular. You can go down to the atomic level almost of like the one square that you're designing that and you design out. I forgot what the term is. It's atomic something or other. Mm. My, I can hear my designer Olivia screaming right now. <laughs> It's this. Yes. It's atomic something with atomic method or something for designing. Yeah. And you think about it as a grid factor. And that's a big thing when it comes to laying on a newspaper. May it, may it rest in peace. Um, that <laughs> you learn how to lay things out. You learn how to write. You also learn how to ask questions, hmm. which is huge for when you want to do web design because you have to interview the client. You get to say, oh, I'm going to be an artist and it's going to look like this. Yeah. Without consulting with the client first. And it's the same thing when in corporate America, you can't just go willy nilly. Right. <laughs> You'll get fired. You'll get fired really fast. And tell me some uh, interview tips as far as like, uh, you know, that you learn from journalism that you apply to the content that you're creating in your podcasts. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. I want to want to hear about that. And by the way, also it, from the yeah. podcast, because Entrepreneurs Enigma yeah. just dropped the hundredth episode, I might add, I which know, is a huge wild. milestone, by the way. Congrats. It, it's, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, I it literally is asking as few questions as possible and shutting up. Because that silence I just put in there that I think Dave should leave when he edits was there for a reason because that pause lets them possibly answer your five or six more questions. Like I, I always ask, what's the scariest thing about being an entrepreneur? Or what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur? Very open questions. And then I know when I had Dave on, he went on for like 15 minutes. Yeah, he rambles, that guy. Dave just went. But it was, but it was the most beautiful thing ever because – I got all my answers. All my any possible question I could come up with was dealt with because Dave knows how to talk. He knows what he wants to say. Not, and it doesn't always happen. Like I have to have some more in the hopper because there's some that say it's tough. Right, an entrepreneur. <laughs> yes, and I'm like, oh my god, I at least have to fill out 15 minutes here. Come on, give me some more, buddy. And you can't say that. So the whole idea is, I have I have three questions. And I throw in, like, what do you think of hustle culture if I need something else? But like, <laughs> I, I have a few other ones up my sleeve, but generally I'll ask three questions, best, worst, and then one, one that I will not give away um, on the show. And it's not Barbara Walters, I tell everyone. I was like, what's the third question? I'm like, it's not Barbara Walters. It's yeah. not Diane Sawyer. It's not hard-hitting 2020 or anything like that. It's another silly question. I just want to keep some mystery around the podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and if you listen to the podcast, you'll know what the question is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen first, and then you'll know. Like I knew Dave was going to ask me, "What's the nicest thing has someone ever done for you? Has done for you this week?" Yeah, like the, what, some version of that. He's more practiced at that than I am. It's not my question, right? But <laughs> I knew that because guess what? I I was a cons I'm a consumer of the nice podcast. Yes, it's very it's a very nice listen. Thank so, you. But overall, I mean, the podcast asking questions is just expounding and so you asked me and i'm rambling on for 15 minutes no but it's a great answer uh it is a great answer that that pause and that silence can definitely help um with uh with getting more out of your out of your gas so and what how do you handle um because i'm sure other people listening to this or or i know some of the people listening to this are other podcasters or, or maybe aspiring podcasters so uh, how do you handle uh, a difficult guest? And you can answer. Yeah, I mean, difficult can be, you know, you know, they're like your point. All, they're all nice, and but some are. Well, every once in a while, when I was finding the right podcasting platform, luckily or unluckily, the system would blow up in my face, and mm. I had to reschedule. Then I would know that the person is going to be a tough toughy and have a few more questions ready to go. Mm. And the few that have happened, no name names will will not come up here. But the next time they came around, they they warmed up more, and I didn't have to ask those questions. Are you saying? Are, are you saying that you had to? Uh, I'm sorry, just to be clear. So you're yeah. saying that you had to, you had to interview them again? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because of, I had yeah. to interview one of the time. One of the yeah. times I had to interview the guy three times. Search engine optimization can be confusing, but your business can benefit from it, regardless of what you do. SEMrush, an all-in-one digital marketing suite, can cover key SEO activities, including tracking your competitors' keyword strategies, improving search rankings, and much more. 
Why choose multiple solutions when you can use just one? Start your free trial today and get on top. Go to bit.ly slash SEMrushMPN. That's B-I-T dot L-Y bit.ly slash S-E-M-Rush M-P-N. Oh, my gosh. I was really, I was really apologetic. Ugh. Once River Cycle blew up, once Clean Feed, which we're on right now, blew up, and then eventually went to Zencaster and it worked. Ugh. That's tough. So make sure you're make sure you're saving this, Dave. By the way. Oh, I save as I go. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah when I you know, I love I love clean feed, but they do not save any audio. Right. They to download it right away. Yeah. Yeah. I um I was gonna say I uh, not hitting record is a big one or not a big one, but it's uh so my that's wife the worst my wife no, and that's, I that's a big one that's yeah a big one. yeah my wife and I started podcasting in 2005 and we had a parenting podcast and so we would just riff basically about you know becoming new parents and uh yeah every once in a while i'd, I'd forget oh, to hit record sense. and uh yeah that wasn't that wasn't pretty yeah i'm sure you were in trouble oh so. big time <laughs> we make our wife we make our wives out to be horrible people and I, I can guarantee you <laughs> You have a very nice wife. I do. Intended. And yours too. You're, she's cooking a great meal. You're the one buggering it uh, up. No, 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 <laughs> no, my, no, my wife can do no wrong. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that this is, she might listen to this. So I'm saying because literally she puts up with me. Let's talk about Mastodon a bit because yeah. for our listeners who are not familiar, um, go ahead and maybe describe it. And yeah. I do have a question about running your own server, your own instance, Because, but let, yeah. let's, let's not get too technical yet anyway yeah, so no. so mastodon is essentially in the simplest most elementary i'd say preschool definition is a twitter clone it isn't people don't you know don't don't freak out people who are mastodon but it's the simplest way to explain it is that it's an email if email and twitter had a baby it'd be mastodon because hmm. essentially you have an email address you have a mastodon address like mine's philly code hound at at masto.ai. Mm. Now, if you were to type that into your email client, it'd be the wrong protocol. And it, unless I had that as an email address as well, then it'd be on that protocol as well, that side of things. But this on the Mastodon and the Fediverse system, you can share out to different servers. And it's, But the thing that's different from, from Twitter is that there's not just one central ecosystem. Anyone, Dave could have future fourth social, dot social, where he talks about HR all the time over there, it can still talk to Seth over on Masto.ai because they're interchangeable, they're federated, so they can talk to each other. So they're federated. I, I really confused everybody. I think I did. No, you're you know you're doing a good job. So uh, Twitter, I'm trying to ask this in a way like I know I, I know kind of I, I mean I'm on Mastodon too, so I I, I know what it no. is. But with yeah, so Twitter is itself a private company. And it is itself built on, you know, it kind of manages its own uh, existence, yeah. its own, and it's, you know, now Twitter has, not to get too technical, but Twitter has what's called an API that allows yeah. developers to have apps that access Twitter, for example, or websites mm -hmm. that access Twitter. They're, they now, used to. Well, they, yeah, well, yeah, that's, yes, that is, uh, that's true. Yesterday, um, they, cut off, they cut off on, what was it, Tweetbot. Yeah, this is gonna be a few months. So a month ago, to put this in my like, current form of when this is coming out, a month ago they turned off they turned off Tweetbot's access. Right, but you know it was yesterday as our recording. Was it only Tweetbot? No, Tweetbot and a few others, but Tweetbot's the only one I can remember because I don't even use Tweetbot, so I don't even use Twitter anymore. Um, yeah, and I also use Tweetbot. So Tweetbot's an app that uses yeah that that you can use instead of the. There's actually app. they're making one for Mastodon, by the way, Dave. Yeah, interesting. So Mastodon, yeah. so the difference is that Mastodon is run on multiple servers, and yeah, so and no it's, one person, not no one person owns it, right? And there's no so Musk can come in. Musk can come in and make his own Mastodon server, but if we don't like him, we can just block a server, and he's talking to the wind as he should be. Mm. So where where would you think the the challenges for like free free speech advocates? I think you, you know, on Mastodon, you find the right server. Like, you know, Dave's over at IndieWeb. I'm over at um, Masto.ai. Yeah. Depending on the rules of that server, you can say whatever the hell you want. You can say fire in a crowd movie theater on a server that allows that. Mm. Keep in mind that, you know, you're still governed by the terrestrial laws. 
Mm. And if you make a stupid statement threatening the president of the United States and that Secret Service hears about it, you're still in deep, deep shit. Yes. But um, so keep that in mind. But overall, the, you can have free speech on here, but it's also moderated. Right. Like I, I help moderate the Mastodot.ai account. And I feel more sympathy for the for the social media moderators that get paid for this. They don't get paid enough for what the shit I see. Right. Yeah. No. It's not bad. I mean, and like our thing is a lot of it's the guys showing their junk yeah. and not putting and not putting it behind a blur. Hmm. So all I do is I write to my I say I'm making your account so it's it's marked as sensitive, and now from now on you can only, you have to click in to see someone's you know what I have to see it first to <laughs> mark it and say bad boy. Don't do that. So if you're running your own server, though, does that become a full-time job then? It can. But if you're running your own server and it's just you on it, eh, you can just choose not to, not to, you can just block the people who are showing their junk. But isn't the, the point. server is technical. It's technical, though. Yeah. And you can go to, you can go to something like where um, Hugo is well in the space. Hugo, Hugo G. Yeah. He's Portuguese. He runs on Masto.host. He's so overwhelmed, he still hasn't opened it up to, to other people that have their own instances. But really, I don't see there being a need for you to run your own instance. Find an instance that you agree with. Um, find out the people you like there, people you like elsewhere. You can always migrate your account and your followers yeah. move with you, unlike Twitter. They move to the new account with you. You can always switch your servers. Only thing that gets held hostage is the, is the posts. So if you know if Dave posted his breakfast every day for 365 days on one account, he could download them for his own posterity, but he wouldn't be able to re-upload them to, to a different server because they were written on that server. It's kind of like an agency of record of sorts. And it's important. And, uh, yeah. and also, in two yeah. weeks, yeah. I'm not sure if it's airing in two weeks or it might be, you know, last week when this comes out. But I will have shared over my LinkedIn, which is LinkedIn.com/in/ Seth M Goldstein. It's it's a long one, but anyhow, I will have talked to the people over at Agora Pulse and Daryl Prell live on LinkedIn. I will have shared out my interview with him explaining Mastodon for about an hour. Mm, so, okay. okay, well, yeah, I'll, I'll include links to I'll, what we talked about. I'll, in the I'll, show notes. Since you linked to that, because that will be, I can always guarantee you that that's coming. That's coming out next week, and you, and before and when before we started, you said this is coming out in a in a month. So it'll probably be last week for you guys. Are you guys confused enough? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, but it doesn't matter. The, the, yeah. No, but I wanted, I wanted a, a good explanation of Mastodon just yeah. so listeners understand, you know, how they can, how they can use it, but it's a good, it, yeah, you described it well. I mean, I think, I think what's, brands what's, what's, what's where it's going to be interesting. What's brands it? are where it's going to be interesting. Brands. Yeah. Because like I used to move Comcast, the evil empire from one house to another via Twitter. Right. Comcast isn't on Mastodon yet. And so I don't have the convenience of saying to Chipotle even, you left out half my, my burrito. Right. And then sending me, like, I don't have the customer service angle of things yet. It's happening slowly, but it's not there yet. And that's one thing I miss from Twitter. Well, one thing I want to point out is that these multiple, for, for listeners, these multiple instances or, mm -hmm. or, or servers, which are the same, uh, just different words basically, but that's the same thing. But these multiple servers all communicate in one place. So like if you, yeah. if I'm, if I'm communicating, if I'm posting uh, on my server and Seth is posting on his server, they, the, those, those, well, for lack of another word, they're called toots, but those toots, uh, AKA, oh, an elf. AKA an elf. tweets, those all appear on the main thing. So like everybody would yeah. see that. So it would look like you're looking like, looking at like a Twitter type of feed um, but where these, these things are coming in from different directions on these different servers, but they're all kind of aggregating in one place. Why yeah, haven't so I can, brands... so I can say hi to Dave. I can say hi to Dave. Right. Even though he's on a different server, but I can look at his posts. Yes. Which is really nice. Yeah. So why haven't brands adopted Macedon yet? Because it's a whole nother ecosystem. It's a whole nother culture. And they're trying to be careful about how they come in because a lot of people came from Twitter and try to make it new Twitter and then the Mastodonians, for lack of a better word, the Mastodon people, mm. they were an uproar that this is not how it's been working for the past. It's been around since 2016. Yeah. This is not how it's been working over here. Adapt. And then, then the Twitter people were saying, we will adapt a little bit, but you have to adapt a little bit to us. And it's been a give and take. So. How should brands adapt on Mastodon What is versus Twitter? They can come in 
they should listen more than they talk. They should they should listen to what people are. If someone's complaining about their internet connection, Comcast should come in and say, "Hey, we can help you fix that." Don't say, "Hey, we can give you a new. We can up your bandwidth right away." Don't try and sell right away. Listen, 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 listen. But what you're describing is the same thing for Twitter, traditionally. Yeah, anyway. but 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 remember, in 20, 2007, when Twitter first started. You went in. You're going into a new ecosystem. You have to be aware of it. And I'm saying it's not different from Twitter per se, but you're already embedded in Twitter. You don't have to. You can go about your regular business. You're starting new in Mastodon. Mm. Does that make sense? So there, you're starting new. Like, yeah. I mean, you're unlike. Like I managed. I've managed a couple brands on Twitter over the years. Um, mm-hmm. uh, back in, well, really back in oh seven oh eight. Um, yeah. So early on and yeah, I mean, that's something I always talked about is the, the importance of, of listening first. Um, I wrote about it in my book <laughs> about, cause I have, Heck, cha- yeah. I have chapters in my book about each social network and how to use yeah. that best. Um, and I suppose, yeah, I, I, I guess in a way it's, yeah, it got a little kind of crass, <laughs> from like the commercialism sort of side on Twitter. And so, yeah, I guess if, if brands are behaving, um, I don't, yeah. but I, in a weird way, I almost feel like because there was an incentive early on for brands to be on, let's say Twitter, because yeah. the people that were using Twitter were early adopters kind of, for lack of another word, influencers of the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and the majority of the people using it were sort of fitting in that space where nowadays on Twitter, sort of Bob and his uncle and everybody else is sort of on Twitter. And so you can get, you know, you can be, you, you, I mean, if you're Comcast cares, let's say you're probably, you're you're being, yeah, well, Frank's, yeah. So Frank started that back in the day. He's in my book about it. Um, Mm -hmm. But, but nowadays, oh, by the way, yeah, the thank you. Thank you. But, but nowadays, but nowadays everybody's, you know, everybody, like so many millions of people are on Twitter. So you could think like a brand is just being inundated constantly with customer support problems. Oh, so imagine. in a way, yeah. but if you're kind of restarting that, I would see, I, I could see the case where some brands are like, you know what? No, like, I don't want to be on Mastodon. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> But the thing, what you got to realize, if you're not there or you're not there, you're still being talked about. You right. You can't stop people from talking about you. So if you're not there to answer, they're still talking about you and they can still badmouth you and say shit about you. Yeah. You know, they but, can still do that. And if you're not there to counteract it and control the narrative, it's being made for you. But so but that's very much the exact same thing we were talking about in 07. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right? Like brands that were savvy and smart were on there listening and 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 reacting mm-hmm. when, when need be. I mean, I would do that. I had, when I managed uh, our social and, and much more for uh, the hardware tech company, I mean, I had all our, I had Twitter searches created for all of our products so that when somebody mentioned one of them and they said how much they loved it or how much they were having trouble with it, I could respond accordingly. They gave you the keys, Dave? That's scary. I, the first day uh, I started that company was the first tweet. So, yeah. Wow. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, awesome, bud. but it's interesting. So, so what you're saying is though, and so I, I think you're making the case that brands should still be, oh, should be on Mastodon. Yeah. And, and go about it slowly. Dip mm. your toes in, get an account. Like, I mean, on Mastodon.ai, um, those who watch MSNBC, Joy and Reed, Joy and Reed is on our server. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is a big deal, you know. Rob Reich got, you know, love him or hate him, he's on our server. When that happened, everyone started following our server, and it's like, okay, we gotta figure that out. So when Comcast joins the server, if they if they can even spin up their own server, which would probably be the smartest way to go if you're mm-hmm. a brand to spin up your own, like, you know, Joe at co- Xfinity dot social or whatever, they can steal this and not gonna charge him for this free consultation. They can set up Xfinity.social and have all their people who are on customer service have their name at that address. Mm-hmm. And then people can say, hey, I was talking to Joe before. I'm going to go at Joe on on uh, Mastodon and, t- and continue the conversation. Yeah. Oh, this is really helpful. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that you were able to kind of explain that. Okay. Lightning round. Uh-oh. Here we go. 
complete this Dodge. sentence. Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> complete this sentence. Nice guys and gals finish first. What's a nice book you recommend to the nice makers listening? Other than Dave's book, I would say <laughs> Winfluence by Jason. Yeah, Jason Falls. Jason's awesome. Yeah. Jason Falls. It's a great Absolutely. it's a great book. And I'm not just sucking up to him. It's actually a really good book. No, it is. And, and also and also the little old book, but it's still good to read. There's no bullshit social media. He wrote that too. Yep. Uh how is Seth nice to himself? I give myself a break. I get up and which just sounds weird, but I get up every morning, at least so far, um, at five thirty and I give myself a break before I start the day. To just be with myself. <laughs> mm. Read a book, meditate, mm-hmm. have breakfast before the, the, the terror comes down, being my 10-year-old. Right. <laughs> good good plan. If you had a billboard, what would it say? Everyone just be nice for crying out loud. <laughs> I love it. And maybe put up that billboard in Nashville to, so for all the yeah. Californians we'll you and little, I'll, let you put, I'll let you put your little logo in the corner. There you go. Nice. Nice. Cross-branding. Yeah. Seth, this has been awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us. How can people get a hold of you and learn more about you and what you do? You could go to goldsteinmedia.com. You can go to sethgoldstein.me. You can find me on the interwebs mostly either as Philly Codehound or Seth M. Goldstein. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, this is so much fun, bud. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the show today. Would you do me a favor? Leave a review. The reviews help others discover the show and they mean a lot to me. So I would appreciate that. Did you know I am often hired as a keynote speaker for company retreats or for conferences? To find out more about that, you can visit davedelaneyspeaks.com. Music by Alistair Crystal at alistaircrystal.ca. We'll see you next time and be nice. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Nick Westergaard hosts a great podcast called On Brand. Nick, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. On Brand features my conversations with smart marketers and agency professionals, as well as those working for innovative brands like Adobe, Ben & Jerry's, MasterCard, Salesforce, and more. Tune in and you'll learn how to tell stronger stories and build better brands. Amazing. Where can people subscribe. You can go to onbrandpodcast.com, find the show at marketingpodcast.net, or search for On Brand with Nick Westergaard wherever you get your podcasts. That's two A's in Westergaard. You heard him. Go subscribe.